All right, so here's a real important type of reaction. Let's see if we can uh, go through the reaction here. We'll kind of talk this through together. What would you guys predict would happen first here? The carbonyl oxygen would get protonated. Great. <laughs> The textbook usually just says H plus for acids now, but I still kind of like putting in the actual acid, so you can put in the actual acid here. Now that was a very important suggestion. A lot of people would miss that, but we've seen if you've got a strong acid, you've got to start by protonating somebody. If you've got a strong acid, you've got to start by protonating, and it's good that you saw who to protonate. Some people might think we were going to protonate this oxygen, but no, just like in the previous cases, we're going to protonate the carbonyl oxygen. That's who we've been protonating in all the previous cases with carbonyls. We're going to keep protonating this carbonyl oxygen at least in this first step. And then what would be a reasonable next reaction? The alcohol will come in a task. That's right, because alcohols can be nucleophiles. Yeah. Who would it be logical to transfer a proton to? E, one of the OH. Yeah. Of course, it doesn't matter in this case who we do. Let's stop and think about what we're doing here. What was the kind of function of this first protonation? How did that help the reaction, the first protonation of the carbonyl oxygen? It made the carbonyl more electrophilic. Yeah. Because after all, neutral oxygens are not very good nucleophiles. So it helps that we made this more electrophilic. Now, remember, what type of reaction do we expect to have happening here? What are the two main things that are going to happen? attack the carbonyl, and then reform the carbonyl, kicking off the leaving group. Mm -hmm. Well, we've already attacked the carbonyl. In order to reform the carbonyl, we're going to have to kick off a leaving group. Doesn't matter which of these we kick off. Uh, but these are not really great leaving groups yet. What could we do to make them into a better leaving group? Protonating. Yeah, and we can do that with that proton transfers, which I, I think you guys already figured that out, so that's good. And that gets rid of the positive charge on our former nucleophile here. Now this leaving group can leave, and it's best to show this oxygen kicking it off. It would probably be best to show this oxygen kicking it off, since the whole purpose of this is to reform the carbonyl, right? The whole purpose here is to reform our carbonyl. You're absolutely right, this forms an ester. Okay, well this is one of the most important reactions uh, that we're going over in these chapters. Now notice, what were the, there was only two main reactions. First, the nucleophile attacked, unforming the carbonyl, and then eventually the carbonyl reformed and that kicked off the leaving group. The only complication is that there was a bunch of protonations and deprotonations and proton transfers. That's kind of a theme of something that tends to confuse the reactions here, but it looks like you guys are getting the handle, uh, handle on how to deal with those. And you saw how we could just do a proton transfer here. Um, technically, probably what really happens here is first this loses the proton to the sulfate, and then the sulfuric acid protonates this oxygen, but we know it's an, an, an acceptable shortcut to just show this oxygen taking the proton from here. In general, um, remember we knew all along that this was going to be likely the L group. So eventually it was going to leave. 
how do we know that it couldn't just have been kicked off before it got protonated? That's right. On the other hand, though, sometimes it, it's actually OK to, to kick off OH if that allows you to reform the carbonyl. Reforming the carbonyl would be permissible to have an OH. But if we just kick this off before it was protonated, it would be hydroxide. Remember we were mentioning last time you shouldn't form negative intermediates under acidic conditions. That's a, a very common mistake that students make now at this point. Um, they, they, have, they have intermediates that have charges that are not consistent with their conditions. Since we have acidic conditions, everybody should be positive or neutral. A professor is very, like, he says that, like, every single lecture, basically. Like, how if you're doing, like, an acidic right. mechanism, then you shouldn't have a minus in it. Like right. This. Yeah, and that signals two things to us. First of all, it signals that that's an important thing you can lose points for on the exams, and also that the reason that he's a, a repeating it so much is because students tend to forget that, so that's very important. Yeah. Under acidic conditions, our intermediates should be neutral or positive. Under basic conditions, they should be neutral or negative. There's one little exception to that. After all, here we, we are forming sulfate, and sulfate is negative. But that's okay because that's the conjugate of the acid. Except for the conjugate of the acid, everybody else should be neutral or positive. Okay, so that was um, one important uh, qualification to that here. What's the name of this reaction? This is a reaction where we made an ester. So what would be a logical name for this reaction? This is called esterification. Perhaps you've heard that name uh, in lecture. This is called esterification, whereby we make an ester. What, what functional groups do we make the ester out of? Um, carboxylic acid and alcohol. That's right. Esterification is a reaction between a carboxylic acid and an alcohol. So this is important for synthesis problems. If you're trying to synthesize an ester, well, one good way to do that is a carboxylic acid plus an alcohol. So what's the L group in this ester over here? The whole O group. The O and these two carbons. Now, this is not the L group. The L group does not include the carbonyl. It includes this over here. Now, here's a very important point. What type of functional group did we use to introduce this L group? What type of functional group did we use to introduce this L group into this carboxylic acid? Well, we used an alcohol. And the important point I want to make is something I mentioned earlier. This doesn't look like an alcohol anymore because it's deprotonated. And that oftentimes confuses people. When students just look at an ester, it doesn't jump out at them. And they, they don't just look at this and say, oh, the way to make this is with an alcohol because this doesn't look like an alcohol anymore because it's lost the proton. Well, that's true for any of these if you want to make them. Um, so how do we put this OR group on here? Well, one good way is to attack this with an HOR, which can then deprotonate. And how could I put this NH2 group in here? Well, a good way to do that would be with an NH3, and then it would deprotonate. So you have to remember that before something attacks, it oftentimes has an additional proton, and that messes people up in their syntheses.